had she committed the crime uh, somewhat later, when we weren't demanding juvenile crime for juvenile, juvenile time for adult crime, uh, she would be out by now. So, so uh, the innocentric movement doesn't address the fact of overcriminalization. Uh, it doesn't obviously address the fact that many people are criminalized simply on the basis of policing habits. That is, their communities are over-policed, and other communities are not. When I was at Cornell Law School in 1980-something, one, I forget, it all blends together. Um, we had uh, powder cocaine had first made its way into the, the the custom of the white privileged class. And, and we had lots of cocaine at Cornell Law School. And believe me, nobody was kicking down the doors of the dorms at Cornell Law School to arrest these people for snorting cocaine. Down the street, however, where we would get our cocaine, uh, in the town of Ithaca, there were plenty of people getting arrested for possessing uh, less cocaine than we possessed. So, innocentrism doesn't address the fact that, that uh, people are being criminalized based on policing habits. It doesn't address the fact that may, many people are guilty of it, but should not, but it should not be a crime in the first place. Drugs, for example, uh, and, and more exotically, is Edward Snowden guilty of it? Yeah. Was Chelsea Manning guilty of it? Yes, she was and is. That doesn't address the question, though, of, of what should happen to them. They are not innocent people, but the question is whether they should be tried and prosecuted. And of course, innocentrism doesn't address more broadly the, the racial disparities and financial disparities that, that deform every part of the criminal justice system. Uh, that is, if you, from the beginning, you are more likely to be arrested if you are poor or black, uh, you are much more likely to have a bail set that you cannot attain, so you end up in pretrial detention. The quality of your defense is going to be often underfunded, overworked. Uh, if you're poor or black, you probably cannot afford uh, a mitigation expert to do a great mitigation report showing all the great things about you and all the potential uh, that you had, all the potential that would be wasted by criminalization. Uh, you certainly are unlikely to get some sort of alternative sentence, and you're much more likely to be incarcerated. Uh, you're more likely to suffer from prosecutorial misconduct, police misconduct, and have the justice system, the, the, the judicial system, connive at police lies and uh, prosecutorial misconduct. Uh, when we represent the guilty as criminal defense lawyers, uh, when we win, nobody likes us. We don't get that great high of getting a guilty person off. We get harassing phone calls and threats and people saying, yeah, what if that happened to your daughter? There's no wonderful high from the people who usually hate us. They continue to usually hate us. The right wing continues to dislike us. They don't praise us for our fine work. Uh, so what is it that we do when we represent the guilty, when we must represent the guilty, when we should represent the guilty? Basically. We do harm reduction as criminal defense lawyers. I mean, I, I am the, the legal equivalent of a needle exchange program. Uh, okay, you know, probably not going to cure your habit, but at least you're not going to get hep C. That's what I do. Maybe I can get you probation instead of imprisonment, or maybe I can get you a, a, a city time under a year instead of upstate jail time. It's not glamorous, uh, it's not particularly fun, and, and, and it's, it's sort of miserable work. It's the kind of miserable work that public defenders in this country do every single day, day in and day out, and are utterly unappreciated for it, are underfunded for it, and nobody is championing, nobody is creating a, a, a television program on uh, Washington, D.C., public defender 
where you deal with an endless number of people who did it, who were miserable, who were every bit as much victims of circumstance and bad luck than, than the actually innocents. And the solutions that we should fight for as progressive people are not innocentric solutions. We need to fund high quality criminal defense for everyone. We need to create bail funds to get people out of jail on petty offenses, and we need to work for legislation and judicial change that, that decreases the dependency on cash bail. We need alternatives to sentencing, uh, alternative sentencing that does not involve incarceration. We need some sort of process for expungement of criminal records. Most people would be shocked to learn that in the state of New York, if you committed a misdemeanor 30 years ago, that is still on your record. Yes, it is. There is no mechanism to get that off of your record now uh, or, or, or ever. We need fewer prisons and smaller prisons and better conditions in prisons. We need more oversight of police and prosecutors. We need reforms that address the abuses of the system that wrongfully convict people, not wrongfully convict innocent people, but wrongfully convict guilty people. Uh, and, and so we need, I think, to get out of the warm and comforting light of actual innocence, where we've all become very comfortable, and start to go over to that other side of the street where things are, are far less clear, where nobody is shouting out our names in appreciation, and do the real business of deconstructing this system of mass incarceration. Thank you. <laughs>